Like everything in the natural world, the Northern Lights is rich with stories and mythology. Now we live in the age of science, and so we live with a scientific story about the Northern Lights. It might not be very old, but it's just as remarkable as the many stories that came before. The auroras are a visible expression of something we don't normally see, which is the space weather environment surrounding our planet. And all of this begins with our star, the Sun, which is about 150 million kilometers away. Particles leave the Sun's atmosphere in the form of something we call solar wind. The Earth's magnetic field catches a small amount of it, and as they plunge into the atmosphere around the North and the South magnetic pole, they strike gas atoms in our atmosphere. They give that energy back as light, and it makes the sky seem to glow. There's a tendency for people to feel a bit misled when they see photos of the Northern Lights because they're so vibrant in colour. And although it always appears more subtle than it does in photographs, I think the colour is actually very special to see by eye because it's so faint, and yet it's so clear when the conditions are just right. Auroras are much larger and farther away than they seem. They appear in an oval which surrounds the north and the south geomagnetic pole. And the ovals can be thousands of kilometers wide. But they stretch all the way up into a part of our atmosphere called the ionosphere, which is nearly a thousand kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So those curtains that you see rising up into the sky, they are extraordinarily tall. I'm so fascinated by the stories that have been told for centuries. Stories by the Greenlanders about children playing in the snow, playing a ball game with a walrus skull. And the Sami word, which is goafsahas, meaning the light that you can hear. So the lights have been said to make noises for a very long time, and it was often dismissed as a kind of psychoacoustic phenomenon. But we now know that auroras do make sounds. During a very active auroral display, some of that discharge is released and it creates a crackling and rustling sound, sometimes sharp snapping sounds as well. And this is the white whale for all aurora chasers. It's something, unfortunately, I have to say, I have never heard. And everybody that I've met that has heard it, just heard it by chance, not even really knowing what it was. Almost everything about Norway makes it perfect for aurora chasers. The fact that Norwegians named the Northern Lights, I think that's pretty special. We find the first reference dating back into the mid 13th century, where Norwegian explorers traveling to Greenland encountered the Northern Lights and wrote down the word Nordorjos, which is the, the Old Norse word for the Northern Lights. The landscape of Norway is so rugged there are mountains everywhere that break up the clouds that can provide extraordinary moments for aurora chasers. So there are still surprises for scientists. There's almost room for mythology still when thinking about the Northern Lights. And some might say that the science of auroras erodes some of the beauty. But for me, although some of the mystery has been lost, none of the magic has been lost. It's an overwhelming sensory experience brings your attention fully into the present, and you seldom think about exactly how it's occurring. You're only concerned with how it makes you feel as you watch it.